So uh, I am currently living in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, originally from the Bronx. Uh, oh. So I have six poems prepared for you guys. All of these poems have been published in uh, various literary magazines. Uh, the first one I'll be starting with uh, was previously previously published uh, in the Pennsylvania Bard's Eastern PA Poetry Review of 2023. It is called An Orphan by Circumstance. No tragic accident, nor terminal diagnosis, just absence. A physically absent father, an emotionally absent mother. Her physical form present, as her hands struck me, wielding weapons of what's nearby, bare and open mostly. Years spent flinching whenever she walked past, spent learning not to blink when getting lectured, spent keeping my arms behind my back. To hide years spent digging into my skin, spent years spent learning how to dissociate in plain sight, spent building a mental escape from the pain and pompous piety. Always expected her discipline, almost welcomed it. Groomed to believe that fear and respect are one and the same. To believe that those who should love me can and will hurt me. To believe those who should love me can and will abandon me. When she's noticed hitting didn't work anymore, she switched to insults. You're getting so fat as she hands me another plate piled up. That's a stupid reason to cry as she dismisses my anxiety. You're never going to get anywhere in life as she wished for my downfall. Perhaps she was projecting. Ironic that she warned me of abusive men, the kind that raise their voice and hide their funds, the kind that will exploit my insecurities and force me to submit. Ironic she's outcasting stones to glass houses, turning a blind eye to the very behaviors she's afraid of. I've already witnessed at home. I've since been free of her physical control, still spent years with mother lending her voice talents to my anxiety, still spent years seeing her as my worst fear instead of just an old lady, still spent years trying so hard to forgive her and falling short because she's proof that some people never change. I can't remember much of my father, a stranger who lives in the fog of my memory. I can't remember if my mother ever showed me affection. An abuser first, a safe haven never. All I remember is pain. Ooh. she planted in my mind's voice. Why was I the suitcase brimmed with her traumas, packed in a hushed rush to hold, fold, keep unfold? But when I tried to unpack mine, she was so cold, so sold on scold, she slashed my sass with her slipper soul. I wrote letters to God for divine intervention, begging for the torture to end. She only paid attention to me to cast me in the role of punching bag, to remind me I'm a burden, to remind me I'm not wanted. I was ready to return to sender, ready to return to a home that must be better than my own. I was ready to be untethered, to commit this unholy act, to surrender, to meet his holy skies. I wrote letters to God that became letters to myself. Why did he neglect my cries for help? He was nothing more than an echo chamber. So the last letter to God that I wrote was a farewell and see you soon, was a last confession of the sins I did commit, was another letter unsent, 
under my phone and pill bottles, switch to do not disturb the dead. He left me to make my own choices, but divine intervention must exist after all. Divine intervention is equivalent exchange as a bird banged into my window, startled me out of overdose slumber. I did not succeed in my attempt. He wasn't ready for me to come back home. Wow. And as you can see, I live to tell the tale. Um, <laughs> Uh, this next piece was published by uh, Utrepi Zine first, and then later published in my chapbook, She's Jealous of My Purple Sky. Uh, this poem is actually nominated for a Pushcart uh, Prize for 2024. Uh, so this is day 333 post-departure. It's April, and I'm giving myself reasons to stay alive like book releases and open mics or National Poetry Month, remembering why I write poetry in the first place. To unpack the suitcase, to hold the trauma, listen to its message, to fully sit with stones unturned, to break apart and to yearn for peace, for release. Grief has a grip on me as I prepare to watch our favorite show's second season. I've been here before. I've cried here before. You being gone, but at the time, at least you were still alive. It's April and I dread each passing day, each day that brings me closer to a year, to your last sunset. It's April and a favorite show we shared is getting a second season and you're not alive to see it. Though some days are harder than others, I'm staying alive to celebrate my two and a half year anniversary with my partner, to co-host my first poetry event, to watch the second season of our favorite show. Thank you. Uh, this next piece was published uh, in Soup Can Magazine uh, pretty recently. Uh, so this is She is in Storm. I stride into the suit of she. Gossamer gunmetal gray gathers at the horizon of her hips. A tempest kicks up as laments torment her resentments. A gust of grief shows the secret she keeps underneath her billowing coat of armor. Hurling hail at harrowing half-truths she unleashes a whip of lightning, her wrath a wield to weapon, sorry, a weapon to wield. <laughs> she spirals into squalls, a spectacle for all to see, for all to seek shelter from this onslaught of anguish. Each barrage breaks down ground as she breaks down, and the thunder sounds off to fog-bound feelings soon to fade. I am she in all her blustery beauty, in all her typhoon tenacity, in all her hurricane heresy. Not she as in woman, she is in storm. Mm. <laughs> um, this next piece was published by Brain Dump Zine uh, in their neurodivergent uh, issue. So this is algorithm moving how they say so uh, after Childish Gambino's algorithm. I can follow choreography. I can commit monologues to memory. Give me the blueprints and I can regurgitate of what I perceive to be what will help me slip on the sheep disguise, what will help me pass as normal. Except they can see me counting the steps and counting the lines and counting the seconds until I can escape to overanalyze and catastrophize every flick of their eyes, disinterest dulling their colors. I was desperate to pass, to fit in, but more often than not, I found myself smiling through their conversations I've already checked out of. Except they can see me 
faking, pretending. My mask has always been off kilter. They can see me always chasing thoughts buried elsewhere, always running amok at the same time as their lips moving. Give me the rule book. I can morph myself into whatever you need me to be, whatever you need to take from me, whatever will make you want me around, whatever will make you see me as part of the crowd, whatever will make you ditch the idea that I'm other. Give me a chance to be myself, to drop my guard, drop the mask, to be wholly myself and love me all the same. I've done the dance society begs me to perform, even if I'm not ready, even if I'm never ready, because they're asking me to freestyle, but I have no rhythm, and I have no gauge of what you want from me. What do you want from me? How much more do you want? How much more can I take? What is it about me that makes me half-loved, half-wanted? Why must I adorn this ill fit? compare caring and complicit? Why must I become a puzzle piece with each nub shaved away, given away to this prance, this glance, this trance? You take and you take. Dopamine hits with each flake, each fruit of my labor yanked, and you tell me to expect no thanks. You take and you take, but when will you make the same sacrifice I would forsake? Please. Let me stop, spinning and twirling and jumping through hoops. I'm dizzy, so sick of seeing that I'll be doomed to the same fate if I blindly take the bait of a society changing its state, of society shifting the weight of the consequences of a balanced mandate. So throw out the rule book, burn through the blueprints, and give me your arms wide open. Join me in this dance from hell or let the fucking stop. <laughs> and I'll be closing out my set uh, with my poem that was recently accepted by Poetry as Promised um, for the People of Influence issue. Um, and it's really fitting because I finally got my partner to come out to an event. So this is to my partner in love and life. When I say I love you, I mean I love spending time with you on our dates, on our walks, in our hour upon hour talks. Even when our talks are just me rambling, my train of thought just scrambling out of my mouth straight from the noggin. When I say I love you, I mean I love memorizing every inch of you. You often catch me staring. I often say I'm admiring the view. Mental snapshots that I'm taking of your silhouette and your cue. Shifting from flesh to flush. You're so hot when you're flushed. <laughs> when I say I love you, I mean the universe got it right, making us meet at a crossroads we didn't see ahead of the horizon. And even though I fumbled, you were there to catch me as I tumbled out of bounds like we were always meant to be. When I say I love you, I mean, thinking about the future scares me. I almost never met you. And now I find myself dreaming of two rocking chairs and another sunset, ending the day decades in as we grow old together. <laughs> tonight. Uh, feel free to follow me on Instagram if you don't already. It is Max Fetic. That is M-A-G-S-T-H-E-T-I-C.